Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Risk to the Rescue, Strategies for Driving Revenue, Productivity, and Profitability. I'm Steve Smith, Vice President of Imaging Biz, publishers of Radiology Business Journal and ImagingBiz.com, and I'll be your moderator today. Our other speakers are, in order, Pat Whalen, MHA, the Vice President of Information Technology at Shields Healthcare Group, Brian Anderson, Vice President of Marketing for Sector North America, and Dave Glickman, Sector's Executive Director for Risk for North America. Today's webinar should be exciting and provide you with a lot of practical information to help you select or upgrade your risk. First, I'm going to give you a brief interview overview of the current trends and challenges facing medical imaging. That will be followed by Brian, who will describe the advantages of the Sectra PAX and RISC products, particularly the boundary list radiology concept. Then Pat will tell you how the Shields Healthcare Group expects to achieve a return on investment of about $2 million on their risk. And finally, Dave will present vital information on driving revenue, profitability, and productivity through risk. That will all be followed by a Q&A. So let's get started. I probably don't need to tell you that this is an interesting time to be in medical imaging. Yes, there are certainly more challenges than ever before, but thanks to the rapid development of imaging IT, there are also a lot more opportunities. There are more opportunities for improved image quality and patient safety, as well as opportunities for increased efficiency. Across the country, as you're probably seeing it, consolidation is rampant. Hybrid groups, medical groups, joint ventures, and new ways of structuring partnerships have dramatically changed the medical imaging landscape and could significantly alter the status quo. In response, many outpatient imaging facilities have resorted to creating new service lines, including women's imaging centers, on-site labs, and interventional services to help generate more revenue and create differentiation. But the impact of these innovations, as important and necessary as they are, could be reduced by further reimbursement reductions and increased oversight both of which seem a likely part of the pending health care legislation. The oversight is coming not only from the federal government, which is trying to reduce fraud, but also from radiology benefit managers who, as you probably know, are hired by insurers to hold down costs and ensure that physicians use high-tech imaging only when there is a clear benefit for patients. Thus, more time and resources are being spent on pre-certs and other verifications. Today's question may not be, why doesn't everyone have a risk, but why doesn't everyone have a risk that achieves a healthy return on its investment? The answer may be that risk users are unfamiliar with the current risk technologies and the scope of capabilities offered today that can help drive revenue, productivity, and profitability. Increasingly, the burden of these responsibilities is falling on your IT department. As part of your IT strategy, risk can help shift the focus from the popular clinical technology advances to the overall health of your IT operation, which has to play a larger role in the strategic evolution of your facility. Areas such as electronic medical records, computerized physician order entry can be supported through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act credits, but IT systems still need support to streamline your entire operation. Successful risk execution depends on interoperability or ensuring that your disparate systems are seamlessly able to communicate with each other. Without this integration, many advantages are lost. Web-based strategies are resolving physician accessibility issues as well as storage challenges. Web-based programs provide a higher level of freedom. That's the boundary list radiology that Brian will describe. The responsibility of your clinical, business, and operation departments lies in a willingness to understand that one department's success or failure can have a direct impact on the success or failure of another department downstream. When it comes to access to capital, IT improvements sometimes seem as though we're in an arms race with imaging enterprises constantly spending to outdo one another with the latest and greatest technology. Today, it may be more difficult to secure capital, so make sure that whatever capital you do utilize, your technology remains appropriate to the demands of your physicians, your referrers, and your patients. Across North America, RIFs installations have a 90% penetration. In other words, it is rare that a medical imaging facility is operating without risk. But that same study showed that most risk, most risk technology is over 10 years old. Most risk purchases are now made only when a facility first chooses to buy a PAX. The problem with this is that facilities are missing out on the benefits that today's advanced risk can provide. If you have older technology, it is safe to say that your risk is probably not performing to its full capabilities. Shortly, you'll hear just how dramatic an impact an improved risk can have. Then, of course, we have the current economy. Across the country, 
Medical imaging facilities reporting reduced scan volume have been tracking that difference at an average of about 8 to 10 percent, due largely to a population that is postponing health care treatments. When patients do come in, the need to capture co-pays, deductible, and other payments at the time of service is increasing. And even though recent projections through 2013 indicate a rise in high-tech scans, the rate of increase is lower than in past years. Quality and performance measurements across the board are here to stay, whether government or payer-initiated, and if the pending health care legislation is any indication, we can expect more, not less. Yet another challenge, one with which medical imaging is still struggling, is the issue of pricing transparency due to patient-driven health care. While we wait for someone to crack this code, imaging facilities grapple with whether to post prices on websites and or give them out on the phone, and what discount is sufficient enough to attract self-pay patients without creating a price war. So what do we do? Survival depends on maintaining a technology edge that will not only differentiate your facility from your competitors, but which will also provide productivity efficiencies. One of the perceptions we hope to change today is that of risk as an investment instead of a cost. This is perhaps the most important shift in IT development in many years, and Pat will describe how she intends to achieve a risk return on investment of about $2 million. Our recommitment to exceptional customer service will help increase organic growth and provide an important competitive edge as well. Making customer promises and keeping them day after day is key. Today, survival means examining all of the departments in your business to determine where, where you can save steps and thus increase productivity. Even the seemingly little things, such as appointment confirmations, pushing procedure information to pending patients, and monitoring your waiting room can have an impact. Some of those step-saving measures through risk will be discussed today. Improved revenue cycle management. Revenue cycle management is in the spotlight as medical imaging looks for additional ways to streamline. Here, validating procedures through pre-authorization and more efficient coding processes will help. And, of course, everyone wants to reduce costs without reducing image quality or the patient experience. Today's risk creates many such efficiencies that can reduce the amount of paperwork and files you process and may even allow you to redeploy your staff. A risk enables you to automatically track and report on key metrics that can quickly tell you where you need to improve. Monitoring these real-time metrics means you no longer have to look in the rearview mirror via a monthly report, but can quickly address issues as they are happening. Finally, as you go through the risk selection process, it is important that you create an acquisition plan. In that plan, you should list your desired risk features, integration capabilities, and technical platform requirements, and list these in priority order along with the, an appropriate weighting of importance and the criteria for which you will make your final product and vendor selection. Establish a team or a selection committee with the appropriate staff at your facility and understand what's important to them. These steps will help you find a risk solution that is the best possible fit for your organization. And now, before we hear from Pat and Dave, let's turn the presentation over for a few minutes to Brian Anderson for a brief introduction to Sectra. Thanks, Steve. I'm just going to take a few moments to cover an introduction on Sectra and our product focus in this area. Sectra was founded in 1978, about 30-plus years ago. For the last 20 years, we've been a dedicated innovator in the risk pack space. Our world headquarters are in Lynchping, Sweden, which is about two hours south of Stockholm, and our North American headquarters, founded in 1997, are in Shelton, Connecticut, which is about 90 minutes north of New York City. We've got operations in about 12 countries, so good global diversity. And to try to summarize our company in a bullet point, uh, we are a healthcare IT company committed to the radiology industry with patented research focus in the medical imaging and visualization spaces. We're a publicly traded company on the Nordic Exchange arm of the NASDAQ. And from a company culture perspective, I describe us as a very innovative, quality-obsessed company uh, customer-driven with what we call a future-proof focus, which are, uh, I will articulate a bit more later. We also have over a 1,000 installations worldwide. Sector Packs, a brief moment on that. Sector Packs is built upon a technology called Rapid Connect, which is a unique approach to image management and distribution, leveraging patient, uh, excuse me, patent-pending uh, data transfer and compression algorithms. This technology enables a very efficient flow of data and images throughout your enterprise even when displaying large image stacks over subpar networks with high latency. The concept of boundaryless radiology is one that where image and patient data that is readily available in situations is now made available, while in the past it might have been quite a challenge to do so. This uh, creates a, a radiology flow uh, that enables you to deliver services that have been sort of constrained, so to speak, by geographic and subspecialty boundaries. 
In addition to the core packs and risk products that we'll be talking about here today, SECA provides an extension offering of complementary products and services such as full archive, storage, disaster recovery, and business continuity systems. The bottom line of sector PACS is that it's focused on enabling your business model, even in a very challenging and uncertain reimbursement environment, as Steve has covered in the past slides. Moving on to sector risk, sector risk is delivered with a very robust feature set for both hospitals and imaging centers, as you'll see uh, later today, as Dave will demonstrate. The concept of single desktop is not just a tight integration with other IT systems, but rather the creation of a radiologist cockpit, so to speak, where all of the embedded tools required to drive radiologist productivity are available on one desktop with limited clicks. The ability to have real-time access to various critical operating metrics enables you to proactively monitor and respond to challenges and bottlenecks throughout the day, correcting things as they happen uh, and before they become issues that impact patient care, radiologist productivity, and or revenue. And all of this plays into the fundamental goal of a very highly efficient risk, and that is to let you and your staff focus on customer service and revenue generating tasks, not chasing down recurring issues and miscues. And as Steve mentioned earlier, the competitive environment in radiology is quite tenacious. The ability to expand your service offering, <clears throat> including robust report content, expanded patient services, and quick report time, uh, to name a few, helps you secure your referring clinician relationships and lock in the associated revenue stream. Finally, the coordination of all critical components of your department's or clinic's workflow is essential to driving and maintaining productivity. Sector risk enables this via our single desktop design as well as strong interoperability capabilities. Lastly, at Sector, we need to deliver clinical and workflow solutions that drive business efficiencies and deliver tangible and reproducible gains in productivity. We want our customers to really focus on and do what they do best, and that is on the delivery of world-class patient care. We also focus very much so on risk mitigation. We deliver rock-solid system performance, eliminating business dis uh, disruptions, and allowing you to focus on your business tasks, <clears throat> but also by being a strong, financially stable corporate partner and one that will be there and evolve with you in the future. Close collaboration with our end users has been a long key to our success here at Sector in the radiology IT space. Customer-driven innovation maintains sector's future-proof focus, resulting in the development of solutions that meet your needs today, but also well into the future, essentially a no-obsolescence approach when you go with sector. As I mentioned, integration and interoperability strength is a must. It's not just about connecting systems, but rather it's about optimizing the image and data flow between your critical IT systems. That's really the X factor that helps bring your operation to the next level of efficiency. And again, the concept of boundaryless radiology is that the scope of delivery of radiology service is not hindered by technical limitations. Rather, by leveraging sector's IT product competence, we help our customers drive unique business models while delivering consistent patient care results. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And now it's time to hear from Pat Whalen, who will describe her risk success. Thank you. Before I do that, I just want to dive right in and tell you a little bit about Shields Healthcare Group. Our organization was established in 1970, and we are still family-owned to this day. We are a for-profit imaging center institution that operates 31 imaging centers in two states, Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Collectively, all of our centers perform over 160,000 MRIs each year. We also do other cross-sectional imaging, which includes CT and PET-CT. We also have three radiation therapy centers and have just launched a new company this fall, Virtual Radware, which, whose focus is to provide packs via the cloud. If you're interested in learning more about Shields, you can reach myself and learn more at www.shields.com. About two years ago, when we were looking at where we wanted to go as an organization, what would the changing landscape look like over the next five to ten years? we began to assimilate a plan that was focused on sharing what our vision was, but also establishing some concrete business goals. And naturally, as you might expect, we asked ourselves after we had that plan, what do we need to get there? And perhaps what are the tools that we have today, and are they the right tools to get us where we need to go? So we thought both strategically and tactically about what it was that we needed to move our organization forward into a world that we like to call next-generation imaging. 
we took a look at our current environment, and we tried to establish whether or not our existing information systems met those business goals and aligned with that vision. Here's what we saw. This risk radiology information system at Shields was approaching 20 years of service to the organization. Not a bad run, but pieces of it were starting to become outdated. We had embedded products that were no longer supported by their vendors. We were facing a major database upgrade as well as a Unix upgrade. And many hardware components such as the RAID array had been set by, sunset by the manufacturer. And lastly, and perhaps one of the most important obstacles to building a solution that positions us for the future was that our risk was not HL7. That's not to say we weren't conducting HL7 uh, transactions. It meant that I had to have HL7 programmers on board, on staff, converting our data elements into HL7 in order to conduct any sort of interface or interoperability. Looking at this type of environment and then going back to what our business goals were, we began to see that we might have a gap between our 2009 strategy and what we actually had in place in terms of information systems. The conclusion that we derived from these types of discussions and sessions was that we did not have a system that was positioning us for the future of healthcare and where we thought it was going. Specifically, in the state of Massachusetts, many insurance providers are offering consumer-driven health care products. These are high-deductible plans in which the patient pays cash out of pocket up to, for example, $1,500 if you're an individual or it's up to $3,000 out of pocket if you're a family. This type of consumer-driven high-deductible plan drives not only price tra transparency, but also the need to be able to understand who is on what plan, track co-pays, co-insurance, and ultimately impacts performance, profitability, and productivity. We also wanted a solution that would increase our margins. You know, we are, are in an environment where the Deficit Reduction Act had a significant impact on the outpatient imaging market, approximately 30% cuts uh, from Medicare in that year for freestanding imaging centers. So we were in a situation where we needed to look very, very quickly at post-DRA, Deficit Reduction Act, landscape and make some decisions about how we were going to reposition ourselves. And then lastly, we really wanted to understand what we could buy off the shelf versus what our programmers were doing in-house. And we ultimately came to the conclusion that we didn't want our programmers working on things that were commercially available, such as scheduling systems, report repository type information that could be purchased off the shelf. And that actually we recognized that Shields MRI and Shields Healthcare Group had in fact grown into an e-business that we do provide today through Shields Express Link reports and images via the internet, and what we needed to do was to continue that strategy of leveraging our programmers to differentiate us from our competitors. So with those strategies and thoughts in mind, we began to draft a few solution requirements. For us, it was very clear in our distributed uh, infrastructure that we wanted a web-based solution. We wanted to make sure that we could deploy it in a virtual environment. Our solution here happens to be VMware. We needed it to support a paperless and filmless workflow, as we had already implemented uh, PACS many, many years ago, as well as voice recognition. So we needed to make sure that this solution would communicate and support both of those workflows. And then lastly, as I've mentioned before, Health Level 7. I do want to speak just about one of those bullet points just briefly and share with you our current experience with server virtualization. Yes, we wanted to do it because we wanted shorter times to re restore servers in the event of a disaster. Yes, we wanted less steps to, to be involved uh, should we be unfortunate enough to be in the situation where we had to go through some sort of recovery. But what we have actually seen is actually reductions in the amount of spending of our data center with regard to our electrical bills, and several other related items such as, you know, the cooling in the actual facility itself. We've managed to reduce our energy consumption approximately 
percent from when we started this project just eight to ten months ago. In addition to that, going virtual and having a risk that will run in a virtual environment has allowed us not necessarily to reduce FTEs, but as we continue to grow, we've not had to add any resources in our data center. So before we continue on, I just wanted to share that the next portion of the presentation is really divided into three buckets. I want to talk specifically about how the risk can contribute to driving revenue, how the risk can enhance productivity, and then lastly, I want to talk to you about net net margins and profitability. So the next four slides are really about driving revenue. As I mentioned earlier, when we sat down and we established what our business goals were going to be in the future, one of those goals was to have the best product in our marketplace. And we took a look at it and said, we believe we have the best imaging products. We've invested in the latest and greatest imaging acquisition devices and modalities. And we then turned and looked and said, when was the last time we evaluated our findings, our report? So we do provide images online, but we also provide clinical findings rendered by a radiologist. My position at that particular time was that we provided to the market a substandard product. And we set our goal for ourselves to have the best report in the business. If we provide more information than anybody else, with greater utility than anything else is provided on the market, we can garner and capture and lock referrals in by having the best product, or best report in this case, in the business. On the left-hand side of this slide, you see our first attempt at our changing report. We're just in the middle of implementing this. I used to call our old reports book reports. They were left margined, and I don't have one here to show you, but they were left margined, and it was paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. Now, if you're a referring physician or a PCP, primary care physician, and you look at this report, can you tell easily whether or not it's positive, it's negative? Do you need to follow up? It's a book report, and it's something that we needed to change and create a process around giving the community what it is that they needed to create treatment plans as radiology has become one of the first stops to the lab of radiology in the care process. So in order to develop treatment plans, our referring community needed more information. The report on the right is something we've been working on with SEFTRA. As you can see, it's a structured report. It has more bulleted information. It actually has diagrams and arrows that point to particular regions or pathology. And we believe this is going to be our pathway to the future. With our new risk, we hope to be able to create something that, that doesn't necessarily look like this, but might have features like this. This particular report, you see a band at the top in red, urgent follow-up required. This, the utility of this report, with just those four words, in terms of what a PCP might need to do next, it's easy to read, and it's right there at the top. Physicians will be able to file away or save reports down into their EMR. They're going to be able to take a look just from inside this electronic version of a report, click and be able to see a view of, or a list of prior studies. At Shields, we also hope to add relevant articles right in the body of the report, add of articles of interest that are available on the World Wide Web. We hope to include other clinical reference sites. If a physician reports something unusual, like an osteoid osteoma, that may not be known to a referring physician, but is well documented on a particular website, those links would be included as part of the report. One of the things we're most excited about in terms of positioning ourselves for the future is the ability inside the report to click in and see whether or not the doctor is in meeting the reading radiologist. Here's Dr. Steve Swerdek, our medical officer at Shields Healthcare Group. But be able to click on it and be able to see this doctor is in or this doctor is out. If the doctor is in, request a web conference on this report or perhaps even IM, that particular radiologist. The other things that are included in this that you see are instant messaging, which I just talked about 
but also getting on the phone, being able to request a callback uh, from the reading radiologist, get in a queue and for the reading radiologist to be able to call this particular referring physician back. Also on this report, you see a series of images at the very bottom, the four thumbnails. If this was an abnormal report, for example, the images that best represent the pathology for the referring physician are actually noted in the report. This is a huge time saver. Breast MRIs today are 1,000 to 1,500 images. If you're reporting back to a referring physician, here are the images that show the pathology, they're marked with an image number. It's not enough anymore just to provide the full set of data, which most PAC solutions do today. Moving on to the next area that really promotes the revenue piece and payback of a risk is driving access and accelerating the appointment process. We've implemented something with our risk solution called Turbo Scheduler. This allows the scheduling person to actually take a quick snapshot of the future and be able to offer next available by region. At Shields, we operate in the Boston region, south and western regions. And by being able to have a scheduler receive a call from a referring office and instantly give back to the referring office the next four available appointments available in their region at a number of our different centers means that we'll be able to hopefully capture something on the first attempt that will work for both the patient and the patient's family. So driving the revenue piece of it by locking in appointments. The other thing that we are able to do is to pend appointments. How many times have you received a phone call into your organization where you can't quite book the patient or you end up booking the patient and then you end up with a 50% or higher reschedule rate. By using Turbo Scheduler, these issues have been eliminated for us. Slot utilization is another important area of driving revenue. We have certain centers in our network in Massachusetts and Rhode Island where demand is exceeding supply. We are unable in certain markets to get the patients in during the hours in which the patient would like to be seen. In many cases, we call it backlog. In many cases, we are backlogged out anywhere from seven to nine business days. That means you have leakage and your business is going elsewhere. Through the concept of dynamic scheduling, we are able to manipulate the slots into a schedule that looks something more like an outlook. Our old scheduling system had fixed appointments. You could only do the exams that were 45 minutes each, in the morning. You could never do a 30-minute knee in the morning at a particular center. This method of dynamic scheduling allows you to schedule a 30-minute appointment, a 30-minute appointment, a 45, a 30, a 30, and so on. So this has been a huge change for us, but a very important change because in these saturated markets, we are able to get in one or two additional MRIs per day. Here you see another enhancement from, again, trying to think about how we do business and what we could do better to service the referring physician. Here you actually see on the left-hand side one of our orders. On this particular example, what we had been doing is when the referring office calls in, we actually receive the order in via fax, and we had been writing the date and the time of the patient appointment on that order and then faxing it back to that physician office handwriting, going over to a fax. We could e-fax uh, many of them, but in many cases they were actually hard copy, and so those then got faxed back. With a risk solution that includes automated appointment confirmations, upon completing the scheduled appointment, the ACS, or appointment confirmation sheet, is electronically and automatically faxed to that referring office. This is an additional marketing opportunity for us. On every appointment communication that goes out, we plan to share upcoming events at SHIELDS, important information for the patients. This example in the middle and to the right here that you see includes inserted Google Maps, making it easier and ensuring a better patient experience when they do arrive at your center. These two examples, as you might also notice, include 
medical prep instructions that can be handed right across the table to the patient prior to leaving their primary care physician's office or specialist's office. The next bucket of items that can drive profitability in implementing a new risk actually deal with your workforce and working on things that actually increase the productivity of your staff through the elimination of work. Now, what I mean by that, and I'll take an example here, here you actually see a pre-certification workflow. Because we operate at Shields Healthcare Group, only in the cross-sectional imaging space of MRI and CT primarily, over 75% of what we perform requires a pre-authorization number. This workflow is critically important to ensuring payment and minimizing denials. With the implementation of this system, we hope to manage our denial rate, which is currently around 7%, to less than 1%. How we're going to do that is using an electronic series of solutions that, number one, check eligibility of the patient and import eligibility into our risk, and also working with our payers, we plan to implement a solution that imports the authorization numbers directly into our risk from their websites. We're very excited about this because we believe the importing of electronic authorizations will be a first in Massachusetts, and it's this web-based risk and being on this platform that makes it possible. The next concept in productivity is really about the patient arrival and some of the preparatory process that your staff, staff must do in order to get ready for the patient to arrive at your facility. Here you see the old CoStar screen with the new risk screen in front of it. You can see some of the differences with regard to, number one, how much data you can put in front of the staff member, and but two, more importantly, it's not how much data can you get on the screen, but can you organize it in a way that's meaningful to get down to an acceptable level of clicks with regard to actually having to process the patient. We used to have a seven-question policy at Shields where if we couldn't pre-register and schedule a patient in seven questions, we believed that we were doing something wrong. The staff here had to remember those seven questions. Today we're doing it in about five, and the staff doesn't have to remember, but the system leads the staff through the process. Training here used to be several weeks. Training here is now only several days. And when you talk about some of the types of returns that you have from that, it's very difficult to quantify some of these other or additional soft dollar savings. Just one quick footnote before we leave off of one-click tools. Uh, the last piece you see here is a Medicare ABN. I don't know if uh, your organization is like ours, but we often struggle with the presentation of the ABN when is the ABN to present, be presented, under what rules and what conditions. This system actually generates an automated ABN for the staff member. Talking about workflow, we talked quite a bit about the front office and even the scheduling office. I did want to mention one quick thing about the technologist. Our technologists have been working with PACs for several years. The risks steps that they have to do today are pretty cumbersome. Add PACs to that and maybe a difficult vented inpatient, and you have quite a process to get through in just 30 to 45 minutes. Here you can see at the center of the screen, you can see a green button and a red button. This is begin the exam and end the exam. One of the best things that we did was put on our selection criteria a visual and intuitive requirement to our system selection. We really thought it was important that our new risk needed to be as easy as it is to order a book on Amazon.com, and this is one example of that. An additional productivity piece that I wanted to share with you was just the concept of automation. We've talked about some examples already, but also real-time monitoring. 
In this particular slide, you see our old CoStar system in green and our new system for report delivery. In our new system, we can specify film preference, or what used to be called film preference, now called image preference. Physician only wants to get his images on CD. That's the entry for him here. If he only wants to look at it online and wants to be notified electronically when he has a result to view and wants to be emailed the viewer where he logs in with his username and password, then we also do that. But a highly flexible, customized system that allows us to tailor things to the physician, do things with greater automation, and then lastly, have the ability to monitor what is getting done. Can you imagine having a system in which a fax arrives it queries the risk for information. The information from the risk flows over into your fax system, and the real-time monitor actually helps us monitor whether or not there's been a faxed order available to be worked. And at the time period when that fax has been sitting there, 120 minutes, it generates an email to the scheduling manager to let them know that a result has not been touched within two hours of arrival at Shields. This is really increasing Referring physician satisfaction, it's increasing throughput, and it's certainly helping us do more with the same number of resources. The last section that we're going to cover is the actual profitability component of implementing a new risk. Here you see our old pre-registration checklist from our CoStar system. And what you would have seen there was the registration screen. There's the old, the old screen. And then this is the registration screen from CoStar. The new screen that shows pre-registration checklist for our new risks. What happens with this pre-registration checklist is the following. It organizes the work for the staff employee to prepare for the patients that may be coming three days out or four days out organizing the work in terms of when the patient comes in and the pre-schedule activity, the arrival of the patient, and then the post-exam processes is the way that people and humans think about the work, having a risk that reflects not only how humans think about the steps involved in getting the work done, but having it so that the system leads you through the steps that have to be done is that much more meaningful and efficient. The next concept in, pro in profitability is around workflow. I don't know how many of you that may be on the call today recognize this room on the screen, but this is obviously a medical records room. And what we were trying to do with our new risk would be to minimize the paper. Now, many of you are probably thinking that, you know, well, that's relatively easy to do. You take an inventory of what's in these folders and you try to eliminate it we did take an inventory of what was in the folders. And one area came out to the forefront in which we were having difficulty in it eliminating. That piece was actually the MRI consent. Here's an example. This is not our actual consent form, but just an example of an MRI consent form. We wanted to make sure that the risk that we moved forward with would allow us to eliminate this last piece. We were keeping all those paper records just because we had to keep the consent form on file. With our new risk and our new solution, we've introduced the concept of an electronic signature pad in our front office. And here you see an example of what that looks like. So to the meat of our discussion, here's a template that we use at Shields Healthcare to evaluate any capital purchase. It's a very, very simple form. We believe in keeping things being simple. But you can see by reading the categories down on the left side, the types of things we were thinking about when we were putting together a return on investment. Our return on investment is not something that's foreign to us. We do it for every technology investment that we have. One story that we have here at Shields that we are following and mirroring through our risk implementation is the implementation of our PACs. Our return on investment from PACs has been so significant that we're actually using it as a model to implement our risk. Here you can see the gray bars trending upward at up over $275,000 a quarter 
in 2005 was being spent on film, and that had an upward trend. You can imagine what we might be spending in film today per quarter with the introduction of breast MR and the thousands of images with that and other new applications that are driving the average number of images in a study upwards and increasing the total size of the study. But that's not the story that you see here. The story that you see here by quarter is a dramatic decline in total film spending. Now, this doesn't include other parameters such as the folders for the film, the master jackets, the markers, the barcodes, the staff to manage. This is just our ROI achieved basically on hard dollar film savings. This quarter, in 2009, we will spend just $58,000 on film and perform over 165,000 MRIs. Pretty significant. This brings our unit cost over this three to four year period down from approaching $10 a study to, in many cases, we have some centers that are less than a dollar a study. So using this as an example, let's get back to our current story here, which is the technology of a radiology information system. We do take a look at the savings over a five-year period, and Shields is currently estimating and being held accountable for achieving $2.2 in savings. How are we going to get it? We're going to get it through the implementation of a system that met our business goals, but also a system that allows us to eliminate and simplify work, that allows us to reduce supplies and spending, redeploy staff to areas where we're growing, and eliminate or reduce positions where we may not be growing. We're eliminating our off-site storage expenses, rentals, and retrievals. We're also working towards reducing the amount that we're spending in upkeep to keep an old system alive. We've done all of that, plus virtualize, which will give us shorter recovery times and lowered, economic, lowered energy bills. So from our side and what we've seen already in just several months, the answer to whether or not you can achieve a positive ROI on a risk investment is unequivocally yes. In addition to revenue, productivity, and profitability, there's something else that I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, and that is satisfaction. Driving satisfaction and positioning yourself for the future are two key components to your bottom line. You need to make sure that you're connecting with patients and that you have a system that allows your patients to do that through the implementation of this risk we plan to improve our online patient tools. To the right-hand side, the top screenshot is actually showing our virtual tour located on shields.com. This is one way we've had some creative thinking around what types of online patient, patient tools would be helpful. With a new risk that's web-based, we're now going to be able to offer online patient registration and for certain physician offices, we'll even offer online booking or online scheduling. In terms of the referring physician, when we thought creatively about how to improve satisfaction in that area, but also educate and be easy to do business with, with the referring physicians, you can see lower right-hand corner, you can see our clinical education module which is actually an interactive human body map. And for our referring physicians, we've taken a much uh, different approach in creating, again, online tools to be easy to do business with, but that also have a valuable educational component in a peer-to-peer -peer way. Again, you see our chief medical officer, Dr. Steve Swerdek, featured in a video on the right-hand side of the MRI body map. Being easy to do business with is a founding tenant of Shields Healthcare. Our referring physicians, through the use of the reports that I shared with you, are helping us design and engage in designing the best radiology report for the future. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we wanted to make sure that we were introducing a solution that created happier employees and a culture of customer service. 
In order to do that, we had to eliminate the work and the steps that were involved in achieving certain functions to allow for more time for patient care. Lastly, I think we all have a board at the end of the day that we need to satisfy, and what this board cares about is improving, getting better at a reasonable cost that's sustainable and that benefits employees, patients, referring physicians, as well as financial and business objectives. So in summary, it's probably a good time in 2009 to evaluate your core information system, determine whether or not these tools that you have in place meet, exceed, or do not even relate to your business goals or vision. We found here that our current tools and infrastructure did not support or align with our vision for the landscape in 2010. Invest in strategies that promote both efficiency and market differentiation, and don't just invest because of a goal towards the total cost. There's a lot of things we didn't talk about today that relate to soft dollar savings. Uh, that is also a key component of this, but what you would like, would like to do and what we have tried to do here was to make sure that not only did we have a risk system, but that we took our existing resources and redeployed them in a way that helped us be different from our competitors. Leverage online tools that establish you as a market leader. Integrate to simplify and eliminate work for a culture that has time for exemplary customer service. And lastly, consider measuring your success through a technology return on investment committee that holds each party accountable for achieving their savings. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. That was excellent. Please hang on for some questions because you've generated a lot of interest. Before we get to the Q&A, let's spend a few minutes with Dave Glickman, who will provide even more details on driving revenue, productivity, and profitability through a risk. Hi, I'm Dave Glickman, Executive Director for Sector Risk, and it's my job to ensure that Sector Risk improves our customers' medical and financial performance today and in the future. An effective risk not only increases revenue and improves the efficiency of your staff, but it also improves the experience of your patients and your referral base, as Pat has described. And let's let you also be proactive in the way you manage your department. Let's first take a look at some of the ways in which Sector Risk can impact the patient experience. There are many scheduling systems on the market, but very few can handle the complexity of radiology scheduling in which there are a wide variety of rules that may apply and where patients often come in for more than one procedure. In addition to a more traditional grid-based scheduling module, Sector Risk offers a sophisticated scheduling wizard that lets uh, the user has four possible sets of choices for the procedures they'd like to book. So you can reduce the amount of time you're on the phone with the patient. Depending upon which procedures are being booked, Sector Risk will alert you with any pre-screening questions that need to be asked of the patient. It's all about capturing the right information at the right time. By doing so, you improve communication and patient safety, and you reduce the number of exams that get canceled at the last minute due to inadequate preparation or missing information. Many of our customers call their patients a day or two in advance of their appointment in order to ensure that they're ready for their exams. And Sector's appointment confirmation module allows clerical staff to keep track of appointments that have not yet been confirmed and then confirm them with a single click. Appointments can also be rescheduled or canceled, and patient demographic and insurance information can be updated, all without having to navigate to another screen. Once the exams have been booked, the user will be provided with any prep instructions that are required. The user can also email or fax the patient a summary that includes the prep instructions along with directions to the facility where the appointments are taking place. When the patient finally arrives at your facility, your front office staff are presented with all the information they need in order to quickly process the patient. They will be alerted if any billing or medical information is missing and can review the order information along with the patient's prior exam history and any upcoming appointments. 
With a single click, they can attach a wide variety of scanned documents, such as requisitions and insurance forms, and print receipts for co-payments or private pay invoices. With the right tools, your staff will be able to schedule, confirm, and arrive patients much more quickly than they do today, which not only improves the patient experience, but also allows your staff to handle a greater number of patients per day. However, improving efficiency is not just about features, it's also about workflow and system design. So let's take a look at some of the design concepts within sector risk that can improve user productivity. Sector risk includes a suite of tools that allows our customers to become truly paperless in their operation. The document management system not only allows you to link any type of document or simply a note to either a patient or exam record, but even lets you specify what points during the workflow the document should be automatically displayed for the user, ensuring that they see it at the right time. In this example, the technologist has just begun an exam by clicking on the green start button and has now been alerted that this particular physician would like a copy of the images on CD. As another example, if the receptionist had scanned a copy of the requisition, it can be set to automatically pop up for the radiologist when he begins to dictate his report. The system allows the technologist to record their observations and measurements using interactive templates that are appropriate for the procedure being performed. With sector risk, these electronic worksheets are displayed to the radiologist at the time of dictation, and they can even include them on the final diagnostic report if appropriate. Sector risk can also generate forms for the patient to complete, including consent forms and pre-screening questionnaires. Once they are complete, the patient can sign them electronically using a signature keypad. With Sectra's single desktop design, which puts all commonly used functions on a single screen, technologists can review images and reports from prior exams with a single click. They can also launch the current exam's images without having to navigate to the packs in order to validate them and prepare them for the radiologist. When used with sector packs, the technologist has also shown the number of images and series that have already been transferred from the modality to the packs, so that they can ensure that all images have been transferred before approving the exam for the radiologist. Sector's single desktop design allows a radiologist to complete all of their work from the single screen, including image review, speech recognition, mammography tracking, and even critical results management. When a radiologist selects an exam to dictate, the DICOM images are automatically displayed. And while viewing the images, the radiologist can highlight part of an image and then include it directly within the diagnostic report with a single click. Nuance's PowerScribe technology is also fully embedded within sector risks, so there are no interfaces or separate logons. Finally, from the same screen, the radiologist can register a critical result or indicate BIRADS coding and any required follow-up. One of the biggest drivers of revenue is the satisfaction of your referral base. Sector risk allows you to improve both the turnaround time and the quality of the reports you deliver, along with the level of service you can offer to referring physicians. A sector risk is a web application. You can offer each physician as little or as much access as you want. Most of our customers allow some of their physicians to order exams online. In order to close the loop, as soon as the exam has been booked, the physician will automatically receive a confirmation by email or by fax, including any prep instructions for the patient and directions to the facility. But many of our customers provide their larger referrals with the ability to actually schedule their own exams. Once they've selected the exam or exams they'd like to book for their patient, the interface presents them with several options without showing them any other patient data. And once they've selected a time slot, the physician is presented with a confirmation page that includes prep instructions and directions to the facility. This unique workflow allows your customers to complete a booking in just a few seconds and then be able to actually hand the patient the appointment confirmation, including the prep instructions and the map, all without having to use any of your staff's time. Once they're users of your system, physicians can check on the status of the exams that they've ordered at any time of the day and can view the associated reports and images online. If authorized, they can also check on the exams of other physicians within their department or group. Sector risk can even be configured to email a physician when a new report is available. The email does not contain the report, but rather is a link that asks the physician for their password before allowing them to see the report in the associated images. Once they are in the system, they can order any follow-up exams that have been recommended and check on the status of their other patients. 
Physicians can also receive reports by mail or by fax, and can even download reports electronically so they can import them into their EMR. Once you provide this type of access to your referral base, they will not switch to one of your competitors who require them to call and wait on the phone. To effectively compete in today's market, you also need to know about problems before they impact your business. And Sector offers a wide variety of tools to help you be more proactive in the way you manage your operations. Sector List lets you generate a wide variety of analytical and administrative reports that provide vital decision support to your management team. For example, the turnaround time calculator allows you to measure the time between various exam statuses, such as when a request comes in, when the patient arrives, or when the report has been finalized. You can compare turnaround times by a wide variety of factors, including priority, facility, technologist, or radiologist. For example, if one of your goals is to improve report turnaround time, you can review how you are trending month over month over the past year. The exam distribution analysis provides summary breakdowns by various categories or combinations of categories. You can use one of the predefined templates or create your own report from scratch. In this example, we've asked to see the number of reports read by each radiologist, along with the expected revenue, broken down by facility. The real-time monitor allows users to continuously monitor various tasks or events and be alerted when certain thresholds are met. A single click opens up the corresponding work list so you can act upon the warning. Depending upon your role, you might want to use the real-time monitor to keep track of critical results that need to be communicated, orders that have come in via third-party system that need to be scheduled, or reports that need to be proofread. The snapshot service alerts users by email or text message when service levels are not being met, wait times are excessive, or when there are work backlogs. For example, you might want to be alerted if anyone has been in the waiting room for more than 30 minutes, or you might want to monitor if there are any exams from yesterday that are stuck in patient arrived or exam in progress status. We look forward to meeting with many of you in the near future to discuss how sector risk can help you improve your operations. Thank you. Thank you, David. This is Brian Anderson. We're now going to take on a couple uh, a couple questions uh, uh, that have been submitted throughout the webinar. Uh, there's been a number of them, so I apologize if we don't get to, to yours live here, but what we'll do is we will answer them uh, offline uh, after the webinar closes out. Okay, first one, this looks like it's uh, directed to uh, Pat Whalen. Uh, question is, when you talk about accelerating access to appointments, how has your risk allowed you to do this more effectively? Well, primarily it's, it's in how the scheduler actually views the available appointments. Before in our risk system and most systems that I've worked with before, you actually go into a particular center or location and view the appointments and you actually hunt and peck for the date and time. In the system that we currently have, we're able to go in and offer what we call first available by region. So by being able to do that, we can offer a, uh, a patient uh, several options, you know, at one location, but maybe another center uh, just down the road could get them in a little bit earlier. So this whole concept of first available by region has been a huge acceleration with regard to the way that we offer appointments. As you can see, if I had to go into the Brockton location and out of the Brockton location and into the Framingham location and out of the Framingham location to check appointments, it could take some considerable time versus a single view that shows the open appointment at 9 a.m. in Brockton, 10 a.m. in Framingham, another one perhaps the following day at 4 p.m. in Brockton, and so forth. The other way that it's accelerated our appointment uh, process, Brian, is that we are actually able to offer scheduling for physician offices that are interested in not conducting business over the phone. So we've actually been able to extend the reach of our risk system through this new product by offering web-based uh, scheduling to our referring physician base. Great. Thanks, Pat. Uh, looks like I can hit you with another one here. Uh, question from Pat Well, and again, you mentioned a reduced training burden a few days down from a few weeks, but in general, how has your staff adapted to the workflow of your new risks, and what is their level of satisfaction? 
Yeah, um, tough, to, tough to talk about this one in terms of just the staff in general. Um, as you know, there's, there's many, many different types of categories of staff and workforce components uh, in any organization. Um, I would say the technologists adapted extremely uh, quickly. Uh, the thing that they liked m most about the system was that uh, it really was something that they could do at quick glance. You know, it's not a bunch of small font where they had to, you know, page through screens to get to what it was that they needed to see, do, and perform. Uh, everything is in a visual format for them, which allows them to process a couple of keystrokes and get back to the patient on the table. The managers, the biggest win for managers here has really been in the reporting area. Uh, before, managers has to re used to have to request uh, customized reports uh, and it was done at the programming level inside of IT. This system has allowed us to push out the data, put it in the hands of the managers so that they can run the centers that they're responsible for, and uh, really moving the, the data you know, out to the people that, that needed was probably the big win there. Very little training on that, very, very intuitive. And then uh, the last one I'll make a comment about because it is a, a workforce or an area where, um, you know, a lot of us spend a lot of tra training time because it is your outward interface with your customers, and that is the scheduling area. In this particular area, uh, you know, we used to have books and manuals and days and training uh, for this particular group. We actually, because we run in a virtual environment, have a virtual test system where the schedulers could go on and practice uh, before we went live with the system. Uh, they were able to kind of self-train. We also did uh, Camtasia videos uh, for the schedulers that were, they were able to watch uh, prior to going live, and uh, they have adopted very well. Change is tough at any level you know, of any organization when you're changing out a, a core tool, but uh, we're anticipating, as I mentioned before, you know, cutting down that cycle time of training uh, this group of, of folks from several weeks down to, you know, just a few days. Great. Thank you, Pat. Welcome. Uh, next question for David Glickman. Uh, David, you talked about a paperless workflow. Can you explain what features in the sector risk enable this to happen? Okay. Um, one of the features is the ability to generate documents within the system, and these documents can be fully complete forms, like consent forms, or they can be interactive forms, like medical history or patient screening forms. But instead of doing them on paper, you do them electronically, and there's even an ability to, for the patient to sign the form uh, using a signature keypad, and that digital signature gets stored along with the form. Um, we all know that there's still going to be some paper that comes in, like requisitions that might be faxed into the facility, uh, but there's tools in the system to, to, to uh, scan those in and then make them available to the appropriate people at the appropriate point. Um, for technologists, instead of filling in um, their worksheets on paper, uh, you can create electronic worksheets, and the worksheets can include tables, measurements, um, even the ability to annotate diagrams, and then these worksheets are uh, displayed electronically for the radiologist at the time they dictate. And uh, the nice feature is that you can actually include those worksheets onto the final diagnostic report instead of the radiologist having to redictate that information. Um, you can also uh, have little post-it notes that pop up, um, like in the example I gave uh, earlier during the presentation of uh, you know, a reminder for the technologist to burn a CD, you can pop up little notes saying this is a VIP patient or this patient has a balance due or this patient um, doesn't speak any English, and they can pop up uh, at the appropriate point during the workflow for the appropriate person instead of having to call and, and notify that person um, or, or, you know, jot something down on a piece of paper for them. And finally, there is secure uh, internal messaging in the system. You can send a message to, for example, all the referring physicians who use your system that there'll be a, a new version available, there'll be a meeting, or there's a new modality that's available. Um, or you can send, um, you know, a note or actually an, an, a, an actual exam to a colleague or to one of the staff members to follow up on that. So all of these tools enable you to work from anywhere because you're no longer relying on paperwork that needs to follow the patient. Okay. Thank you, David. Uh, looks like we're going to try to squeeze one more question here. This last one uh, is for Pat Whalen uh, as well. Uh, Pat, how have your referring, excuse me, referring physicians adapted to receiving reports and images digitally, and what steps did you take to communicate this change to them? 
Uh, we've offered uh, reports online at SHIELD since uh, 2002 and images online uh, since 2003. So we've been in the e-business for quite some time, so it's very important for us to make sure that when we flip that, you know, flopped out a uh, risk system that we continue to kind of be able to offer those, those services. In communicating those changes but also implementing the risk, uh, we did a couple of different things. For example, today you can actually go, go to shields.com and you can actually read a little news article about the new radiology report uh, that is debuting with the new risk implementation. You can actually click on a sample appointment confirmation that's also available uh, on our website. The other thing that we have done is every outbound fax uh, that we have that goes out has a cover sheet, and on that fax cover sheet, great marketing opportunity uh, if you're not already doing that today uh, for your practice. But uh, we did take that opportunity on the cover sheet of the outbound facts of every fax result uh, that's going out to announce some of these changes and advancements in terms of features. Uh, we also do have a uh, small marketing group, and that group services uh, their various territories. And through our educational programs and events, we were also able uh, to help uh, train some of the physicians and anticipate what some of their concerns would be and uh, address those concerns. Great. Thank you, Pat. Looks like that's all the time we have today. I uh, appreciate all the other questions that have been submitted, and I uh, will uh, answer those offline or attempt to get your answers offline as soon as we can. Uh, I want to thank uh, everyone who presented today and everyone who attended the webinar for taking this last hour to, uh, to learn a little bit about uh, strategies for driving revenue, productivity, and profitability. Uh, would encourage you to visit our website uh, as well as to visit us at RSNA. Uh, booth number 9124, uh, which is coming up in a few weeks uh, from now, believe it or not. Uh, and if you need any additional information, you can uh, submit a request through our website, uh, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again, everyone.